Hey crafters, thanks for joining me today. We are going to take an Art Dot Freestyle Sticker Diamond Painting, which you see here, and we're going to turn it into a card today. We're going to take it and make it into a very simple card, and in this video I'm going to show you how. So we're going to take an embossing folder, and we're going to use a technique that I saw Jennifer McGuire uh, share or show or teach and I will link that in the description below but we're going to take an embossing folder and as we're embossing we're going to spray the the paper a little bit that way it doesn't tear as much it gives a little giveaway um, it's a very good thing technique to do before embossing your paper is to give it a little spritz of water this embossing folder does come from Michaels I got it on clearance it came in a pack of two for two dollars so basically a dollar I am using the Spellbinders Platinum to emboss. Um, as you can see here, I'm sandwiching it up. Um, the sandwich I use is a little weird. If you have a suggestion on how to sandwich the embossing folder, because I used the instructions and I couldn't find a way. So on this one, I'm using um, the, I think it's F, E, A, B, and C plate. Um, basically, I'm using the two basic plates that come with it, the cutting plate, and then I am using the um, rubber shim and a paper shim, and then I'm using an extra shim to get the embossing folder. Um, I have tried it a couple times, and I did get a little ripping on the first couple times, but um, I think this one works pretty decently. It is a little tight of a roll, so I might not um, do as much, but here I'm lining up the flower and where I want to ink blend my colors so to do this you can do different techniques um, here you see I'm using post-it notes however I will switch to um, scotch tape um, what is it scotch transfer tape or some I don't know but you may use masking tape whatever you use to mask off if you have a stencil you can use a stencil but I'm just masking off the area that I want to ink blend When you're doing this, I am using a rectangle shape. Um, I'm sure you can use many different shapes. You could probably use a circle or a rectangle or square, um, whatever. However, I have used um, the square, the rectangle shape the most. However, I do want to try a circle that seems, or an oval, an oval would probably be really pretty. But again, you just want to either use a stencil or masking tape to mask off where you want to ink blend. Again, I'm just lining up the, the sticker to see where I want the color to come out. Um, however, I did decide to go <laughs> the sticker on a different side, but I still think it turned out pretty. So here we're going to ink blend, and I have multiple brushes. However, I do tend to use the same brush for the same color families. I have a yellow brush and a deep yellow brush. So here I'm inking up the deep yellow or kind of the golden orange yellow and I'm just going to ink blend. You may ink blend however you want. I like to take it in circular motions back and forth so counterclockwise and clockwise. Do remember to dab off before you ink blend because otherwise as you see there that I pointed to you get like a little um, smudge or a deep spot so you're going to have to ink blend more but I did want the bottom to be a darker color so you will see that I will ink blend a bunch on the bottom and the next color I'm going to take, so that was Archival ink, um, Sunflower I think it was. Next I'm going to take the Momentum ink and Dandelion, which I think I'm just going to need to throw away because it is no longer um, inky, I guess you would say. It's, it takes me a long time to get color. I really wanted that to be a little bit deeper of a color, so um, you'll see that it takes me a while to get the color I want. And then the last color I use is Distress Ink uh, Squeeze Lemonade. So I'm just doing kind of like a, um, a blend of from dark to light of the yellows. I chose yellow because it is a complementary color to blues since the flower is blue and I thought it turned out really pretty. You will see that I go back and forth in Again, you can use whatever technique. You will see that I just kind of rub it back and forth to make the inks blend together closer. Um, 
but again you may go back and forth you might go back over it you'll see that I do I'll kind of clean up some areas or make some areas darker but you just want to ink blend until you get the colors you want Next, after you're done ink blending, you want to take Perfect Pearls or a shimmer powder that you can add to your card. Here, I'm just using the Perfect Pearl white color. It will just add an extra shim or shine to your card, and I will just rub that in back and forth. Remember to set it with water when you are done or what, however your ink, or not ink, but your powder needs to set. Please remember to set it. So it doesn't rub off but I'm just gonna brush this in there until I feel like it's a good coating and then I will take it off and spritz it with water Here I already have pre-cut cards. Um, it is a pre-cut A2 base card, which is four and a quarter by five and a half. And then I decided on this one I wanted to use a light blue mat to bring out the blue in the background. Um, so again, that is just a basic mat of four by five and a quarter. Basically, it's just a quarter down from your card base and then the white that I did cut to do the embossing on um, is three and three quarters by five so again just a quarter down from the blue mat however if you have um, dies that cut this out you can use those dies to help with the mat so I am going to use the side that is as you can see I wanted to show you the different ways you can see that I did use this embossed side that is popped up out of the card so I am going to just tape that down and since I did spray it with water um, it kind of crinkled the paper a little bit as you can see so what I'd like to do is start at the top and make sure it's nice and pressed down and then press it from the top to the bottom or you know uh, side to side so that way you're not just randomly pushing it down and get crinkles you just kind of want to make sure it lays flat and then this is what you get and you could just be done here and add a sentiment um, however, see, I wanted to show you the flower. We're going to add that on later. Um, kind of playing around with it as I go. As you can see, I like it off to the side. Now we're going to take the Alternude Bold um, Bouquet stamp set and dies that go with the Happy You. And we're going to cut a. We're going to try first to emboss the Happy. Um, and I think I used Hope Your Day is Happy. So we're going to actually ink emboss this so to ink emboss I just get my platform and I'm going to line up the paper and then rub it with um, embossing powder a uh, static resistant embossing powder tool whatever you want to use and then use Versamark ink um, the clear one I forgot what it's called but Versamark ink and then I'm going to put um, silver embossing powder on it and heat it up as you can see here I am conditioning my stamps this was a new stamp set so make sure you do condition your stamps I either use my thumb or the back of my hand or my wrist to rub the stamps and then as you can see I'm using the Versamark ink to add the powder to the paper So here is what the embossing powder looks like before you heat 
set it. So I am now heat setting it to give it that extra shine. And I will show you that in a second. So now I'm going to take my sentiments and I'm going to cut them. Like I said, Happy has a die cut, so I'm just going to use my little sidekick machine. This is great for little sentiments or little die cuts. Your bigger platform is best for when you're using big plates or in the embossing folders. Um, but here I'm just going to use my sidekick to cut out Happy, and then I'm just going to use a paper trimmer to cut the rest of the sentiment. Now that we got our sentiment cut, I was trying to show you how it looks, um, but the lighting, I just replaced the light bulbs in my area of workspace, and they're super bright, so <laughs> getting it to show on camera. But here we're going to line up the flower. I decided to try it center, so you just want to play around with where you want it. Um, I kind of wasn't happy with the happy and the um, hope you have a good day in silver, it kind of was fading to me into the paper since it was white on white. Um, I do like the placement that I end up right here with. Kind of looks like a little triangle and your eyes kind of like a um, triangle site formation. It just makes your eyes notice things better um, when threes. So you want to stagger in your card making. Make sure not everything's lined up perfectly. A little bit of staggering even when you do um, sequence or drills or diamonds or whatever you do want to probably make sure you um space them out and kind of do triangular information uh, not for information but triangular shapes so that way your eyes can get caught or the person who opens it they'll very likely say oh wow so so i decided to use black here instead of um the silver to see if that would look better I'm just trying to reline up because um, I had not taken my stance off yet to get the paper on. So that's all I'm doing here is inking black ink onto it. Um, the good thing about a stamping platform is you can um, stamp as many times as you want. As I pointed here, the H is not very clear. So I'm going to just go back and ink it up some more. And then I will cut out the sentiments and the happy. Alright, now that we're getting the sentiments cut out, I wanted to go ahead and show you. So here's happy, and you can see how it pops on screen, and then here's the silver happy. See why I didn't like the silver happy? So yeah, we're going to save silver happy, and I thought maybe try both silver and black, but I like black better. So that's the great thing about card making is, even if you don't like something, save those pieces, and you can use it for another card. So we are going to go with black. And we're going to cut the other sentiment and then we're just going to go ahead and glue everything, put everything down on the card.
So with card making, it gets to be your own ideas. So see, you just want to kind of play around. And that's when I settled on that type of look where it's staggered a little bit. Um, I did try to see if I like centering everything back in the center of the card. But I really, I mean, that would have been fine too. It would have gave it a little bit of a cleaner look. But I'm really happy with the way it comes out if you stagger it. Um, I even tried it to the other side. But I tend to put my main focus to the left. I don't know why, but um, you can do it however you want. But just play around. That's the great thing about card making. So I just played around and decided to go with what you will see here in a second. So now we're going to just stick everything down. So like I said, this is a sticker from Art Club, not Art Club, Art Dot. And you can get these off Amazon. I will link that description in the description below. If you'd like to try um, adding diamond painting to your card making, this is great. So here I wanted to show you that the sticker is clear. So um, another technique you could do here if you don't like seeing the color through the sticker is just add it to like a white piece of paper and then cut it out. Um, be a little more tedious work. I was okay seeing the color through a little bit. Um, it doesn't really affect it. And then I decided to pop up the sentiments with um, foam tape. So that's what you'll see here in a second. When you are working with foam tape or foam dots or whatever, if you want to have a little bit of wiggle room um, when you're placing it just to make sure you place it correctly, just add a little dots of glue or a little strip of glue to the um, foam tape after you take the backing off so you're able to move it around a lot. Um, this is really good for when you do shaker cards so that way you can move the um, top and line it up good. Um, but you don't have to with sentiments. Um, you'll notice that I did it earlier with the hope your day is. But with happy, I just placed it down. Um, I did kind of have to move it a little bit. But there is our card. So that's how it turned out. A very simple card. But you notice that the lotus flower just really sits there and shines and sparkles. And then you got a little bit in the background. But isn't that cute? So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please give me a thumbs up if you liked it.